do, do, do. So if we're live, you're catching me singing do, do, do. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening's IBD and Ostomy Support Show. I'm Louise, aka Crohn's Fighting. And tonight we're having a bit of a bit, bit, bit of a, a broadened field this evening. So we will be covering contraception briefly because I think we did some of it last week, but I know Natalie's done quite an in-depth uh, blog post previously with regards to contraception, IBD, malabsorption, ostomies. Um, we'll be covering um, men's fertility briefly. I did a poll on Twitter, but men do not like speaking, <laughs> unless it's via inbox. Um, what else? Um, I think we're also covering know your rights as a patient, so when you're in hospital, if you don't feel happy and that sort of thing. Um, and I think we're also covering a bit of fatigue because I know three of us have been smacked in the face with it this week. I don't know about you, Nat. Oh, I've been struggling for about three months now, I think. It's, um... So, um, yeah, we're going to be covering that. I'm sorry we're a bit late, but we all got a bit late signing on because we've all had naps and running late or on the phone or just generally just forgetting what the time was. Um, so what have I been up to this week? So went and had my wisdom tooth removed on Tuesday. I'm currently on a rather fetching dose of antibiotics, leaving me with severe dry mouth. I'm still on a liquid diet, um, so I think since Tuesday I've had two bowls of soup and a cup of yogurts and a soft biscuit. <laughs> um, what else? Um, I went to an event up at Guys in St Thomas's Hospital yesterday, which is a first, and they actually now have a stoma support group, but it's not just a stoma support group, it is for anybody that is suffering with bowel issues, so you don't necessarily need to have an ostomy, people with catheters, uh super, is it super super pubic catheters right rach yes well um, i think it's all catheters isn't it and also yeah. the rich on and off you know um people having it's to do control. yeah people having to um do enemas to themselves due to slow bowel transit people with j pouches ileostomies urostomies colostomies jujinostomies uh, cachectomies um it was lovely i heard such inspiring stories yesterday um I was good. I didn't cry. I was quick, pretty close to it, but I had a load of makeup on yesterday to hide my bags. So if I started crying, it would have run down my face, which would not have been a good look. Um, what else? So um, obviously, I've been wearing the Pelican vitamin E bag for months. Um, their trial packs went live on Monday. Um, for those of you, if any of you have got the trial packs, you get a Polaroid. So it's called Frame It, Snap It, Share It, or is it Post It? Uh, this is really bad. It is yeah, posted. Yeah, it, it is posted. I got it post right the it. first time around. So um, you put that, you put your little number in the corner, snap around your stoma. Don't have to do your face at the end of the day. If, if you don't have to do your face, and go, oh my God, that's my stoma. Even though mine's, um, people have been sending me messages by a messenger circling my stoma in adverts, which is really bad. It's the fact that they know what my stoma is. It looks like <laughs> Um, you get a little card um, explaining how to do the trial and the benefits and you also get a rather fetching journal now because I've been using the bag as long as what I have I won't be using the journal for those purposes I'll be using it for work purposes um, or just generally writing notes in because I like a notebook um, um, I've been drugged up this week um, I've been away with the fairies um, I've literally been saying whatever is on my brain i'm thinking that i'm saying it in my head and i haven't i've been saying it out loud so that's got me into a bit of trouble this week um, <laughs> i'm laughing and, at uh, natalie's reply <laughs> on the chat. i'm sorry Some, somebody's sorry louise but somebody, <laughs> typed, somebody found our page by typing in fairy and then we and natalie said oh did ask why they were searching for fairy <laughs> why would you be searching for fairy on youtube Oh, I've got, um, I did a, I did a fatigue video today because Rachel's got Sorry. feeling the fatigue. Steve said it's been kicking his bottom and um, the last week or so it has just literally hit me in the face like a brick wall. Um, we will talk about that later in the show, but that is pretty much my week. Oh, um, Colostomy Association Day where the Colostomy UK rugby team are playing, is it the Red Dragons? Um, oh no, it's not the Red Dragons. What is it? It's now? something. It's Lion something Man. Dragons that they're playing. Yeah. But um, that's up at Gillingham Park, um, Sallyport Gardens, ten thirty a.m. I think it's running until four or five p.m. It'd be great to go. Medway so Dragons. Those, Medway Dragons. That's the yeah. one. I should know this. I used to live in Medway. However, 
I know about chat and chavs. That's about how it is. So apologies if anybody's from chat and watching this. Um, so yeah, that is me pretty much over and done for, for the week. Um, and I'm going to the Colostomy Association Day on Saturday because that is where I lived for 11 years. So um, I will hand you over to Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm walking two stomas. Um, what have I been up to this week? Today I struggled with fatigue. It's been... Um, I had to sleep earlier, so that was good, and I um, that helped me. I feel a little bit better. I'm gonna start since my last septic commission. I've been listening to my body a bit more, so that has been helpful. Um, this week, I've have been a bit quieter. I've I seem to have a lot of work on, and I feel like I'm not really achieving. I'm getting more and more stuff, so I'm trying to sort of organise that a bit better. Um, exciting news on the research side with the urostomy is like actually going to happen so i'm just trying to get the questions together and i'm also i sort of approached on twitter about um having a patient panel for boss so that was quite twitter's a really good tool to get discussion started so that was quite good so all in all it's been a it's been a bit of a weird week i'm, I'm not really sure i saw steve the weekend which was lovely um i'm really tired i'm having a lot of pain in my urostomy so i'm hoping that I'm hoping that's just because I'm not drinking enough and it isn't an infection brew. And I don't think it is. But I, I've just, it's been like I've been trudging through water this week, like tre trudging through treacle. Like it's just been a bit bit difficult. But I I am listening to myself more. I've, if I don't, I have lots of people, Graham, um, Steve, all the girls, Laura, Chris, everybody that, you know, pretty much have like sort of mentioned that if I'm overdoing it. So I am trying to listen and I do struggle with that. But I have listened today and I do feel better now. Um, next week is is quite a quiet week, which is good. So I'm just going to try and get a lot of writing done. But yeah, I haven't really got much else to say. I'm sorry I couldn't go to the time to talk yesterday. I've heard it was great. And I love that everybody's included, not just the bowel side, but the bladder side as well, especially the catheter. So I, you know, I thought that was really good. Um, but yeah, so I'll leave it and I'll hand it over to Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie, aka The Spoonie Mummy. Um, I've had a crazy week. Um, I wasn't on last week. Steve got admitted to hospital on last Monday. Um, he's got sepsis again. Um, he's had a line infection with his port um, and not been very well at all. Um, and on Thursday, I was visiting him and just didn't get back in time um, to do the show. But um, Friday, I picked the boys up. Uh, they started their summer holidays a little bit earlier than most schools because they've decided this year to take all the staff training days at the end of the year. So they've got like an extra week off. Um, so I picked them up on Friday. We stayed down in Kent for a night because on Saturday we went to the Chatham Dockyards. Um, we went to see the Lego exhibition. We got invited for the blog, which was really lovely of them. They got, they got us tickets and everything. And I really felt famous because when I got there, there was like two women sat doing the, um, the the tickets and stuff. And I was talking to one of them and I was like, oh, because she asked me what type of ticket I'd got. And I was like, oh, I really don't know. And I said, oh, I've been given them. And um, I said, I'm a blogger. And they were like, oh, you're the Spoonie Mummy. And I was oh. like, yeah. <laughs> and the other lady on the other chair was like, are you the Spoonie Mummy? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> that's so, the okay. So that, I like, yeah. But that was pretty cool. But um, no, we went and did the, we did the tours that you could do there. It was really, really good day out. We we checked out the ship. We checked out the submarine. Um, went to go to the Lego bit, and the whole site shut down. And unfortunately, a body washed up. Um, in the oh, yard under one of the boats. So. Um, yeah, Blimey, that's took a turn, isn't it? I know. Yeah, it was really <laughs> that awful. Chat, that chat was really cheerful, and then the body turns up. Wow! <laughs> but um, luckily, we didn't see anything awful, and they were really good. They just said, "No, we shouldn't it down," because obviously it's a lot of kids and stuff there, so um, everybody's asleep. But the staff were brilliant. But um, obviously, they couldn't help it, so we didn't get to see the Lego. But we have been invited back, so at some point, if I can arrange it again, possibly we might go back so we get to see, because that's the bit we were really looking forward to. But just because we decided to go from the back to the front, when the Lego exhibition was at the front, that was going to be the last thing we were sort of doing there. But never mind, we still had a really good day. And um, my friend Dan came with us because Steve's been in hospital, so he came along for the day out and, um, and that. And then Sunday, we didn't do a lot. I don't think Monday we 
oh monday we went to see steve tuesday we did some swimming so swimming with my stoma and um all good with my brava strips um yesterday we went to the bouncy trampoline place um i'd got tickets for cheap entry so it only cost me a tenner for both the boys to go in and for the first half an hour they were the only kids there it was brilliant um they wow. loved it they'd got this one guy who was like with them almost like their personal sort of show around her and, and playing football with them and it turned out he was a liverpool fan as well so the boys thought he was really cool and but yeah so and then today we've been up to cst again but we actually did um a day out as it were they've got at st james's hospital there's um a museum called the thackeray medical museum and it's really really good i'd really see, if you're up in that area or even if you're not it's worth traveling for it's um all like completely interactive and the first bit you go through is like um it's like leeds in 1840 or something um and you go through and you all get characters and you follow your character around and what could have happened to the medical medically sort of thing and oh, like patients yeah like one had tb and it showed you what that was and how it was treated and you sort of followed your character's story around the museum and it as it went through all different stages of stuff um but it was set out like an old street it was like you were walking down wow. a victorian street but they even everything even smelled like steve's had to ask for one of their like hazardous waste bags to put his clothes in because he's like i can still smell that minging smell on me because <laughs> a lot of it was disgusting but um but yeah so there was all that bit and then there was a surgery bit and it was it was really good the boys loved it and like i say it was nice because it had quite a lot of interactive little bits so um where riley gets a little bit bored, his attention span obviously for for looking at stuff he's not quite as interested but this kept him sort of going because he could try stuff out and and all that so that was really good and um we've got another week tomorrow i pick up my new car and i'm so excited what car it's is like it scared. it's a red jar i don't a know why I asked because i don't know car type. A kajar. what renault did you say renault kajar yeah nice it's blue <laughs> um <laughs> But Is it yeah, like one of them little smart cars I'm playing no, here? Sorry. No, no, no. no, no. It's, a, it's bigger than the one. I've got a Yeti at the minute, and it's slightly bigger than that. It's got three full seats in the back, so the kids will be a little bit more comfortable um, side by sides in their seats. Because obviously, I mean, Leo's only on a booster, so it's not too bad, but this will give them that little bit of extra room and... Yeah, so I'm a bit nervous because it is a bit bigger, and obviously with Steve not being here, I've got to go and pick it up on my own and that, so... Um, yeah, give it half an hour, you'll be used but, to it. Yeah, I'm going to pick my mum up um, with the boys. I've not told her, so hopefully she's not watching the show live. She doesn't always. And sometimes she watches it live and sometimes she watches it later on. But um, we haven't told her we're picking the car up, so we're going to get there and obviously she's going to be looking for our old car. <laughs> and um, But yeah, that's what we're doing tomorrow. So And then we've got an African drumming session on Saturday. Which I am. Wow. Super oh my it. god! I'm, I'm slightly. I'm so, I'm so jealous because I, I I I like a lot of the kind of shamanic drumming that I do sometimes, uh -huh. and it's yeah, it's awesome. You're yeah. like you go with the boys. Yeah, yeah, we've they it's, love um, it. They love it. Buxton, I've got a festival thing on, and it's all like oh, wow. um, literary plays and music and all sorts of different things oh. going on. So yeah, we're going up to do that. So that should be and the tent that they've that this is in is just beautiful i was like oh my goodness i just want to visit it to see this tent it's amazing so they've got they've got stained glass windows in a tent wow no but um anyway i'll stop nattering on and passion steve because i've talked for ages and hang on <laughs> two minutes before he goes steve they're posting sexy photos of you on twitter in i am denim jeans <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I just had to put it hashtag I, I knew that was coming anyway hashtag bagged i took them photos myself you know God, where's the clipboard? Chris says that you're going old school. The clipboard. That got a clipboard. Is. Yeah, I'm, I don't look at the computer. Do you know, you know what, what he does? Do you know what he does? He doodles while he's. Can I tell you, girls? While while I'm on this, while I'm talking to you guys, I'm just talking to you guys. I'm not on the computer, talking to other things. You know, you've actually got my full attention. Every oh, single one of you. We're replying mm -hmm. to people in the chat, actually. <laughs> we have to reply <laughs> to the chat. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. all of us have their phones to do the this, chat on. 
I got my computer's about 1986. So uh, we're not all technophobes like you. Oh, sure, stop it. <laughs> what have I been doing this week? Teeth. I've been doing. Uh, I've been running. I started my running off. I forgot how hard running is. I thought, the one. I tell you what, running on a treadmill. It's really boring. I got a lady to my left. I got a gentleman to my right, and and there's a mirror in front. And you either stare at yourself, which is a bit weird, or you stare at the people that are next to you, which is even weirder, or you look at the sign, which doesn't change at all. So it's kind of boring. I, I think I'd prefer running outdoors because the, the scenery changes. A um, couple of days ago, yeah, I had my um, my jeans by I am denim, gifted jeans. Took some photos. They're really nice. It made me look really slim as well, which is good. <laughs> Don't laugh. Sorry. <laughs> it was just quite a girly thing to say. Uh, it's just so It's like you've been checking out. It's like what you've done is you've put the jeans on and you've been you've been checking your butt to see if it's uh, gone in listen, and out. Tell you what, tell you what, Louise, right? Flat. Yeah, a couple of years ago, right, I went to a shop and I tried on accidentally I picked up skinny jeans, right? And uh, they look ridiculous. Anyone anyone over thirty shouldn't wear skinny jeans. <laughs> And, a lot of people and, under 30 shouldn't either. Men. I'll tell you anyway. what, I put, I put them on, these skinny jeans, a while back, and um, I, I looked in the mirror and I felt like my body was really close to the mirror and my legs was like really way back. <laughs> it just looked ridiculous. So, uh, so yeah, no, I'm pl really pleased with them jeans. Um, went, to, went to Bournemouth weekend, went to uh, Pride, oh, yeah. which was amazing. Oh, I'd really never... good. It's all right, right, I'll mention it. All right, go. <laughs> I did when she <laughs> came down. I've got the I've got the talking stick now, so just wait until. <laughs> oh, it's now, gonna you know be what? it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those nights tonight. I'm sorry. No, I tell you what, it was a really, really, really good day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. It, we we, we, we decorated we, our bags. We yeah, shopping. we had our bags out and represented. Lots of strange looks. <laughs> people thinking, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> you know, which both of us would rather people come up and say, you know, what's that all about? But yeah, you know, people are shy, and they saw saw a mate of mine as well who, who I, I chat to on Facebook. Yeah, Jack. He he said that he messaged me saying, uh, "I love the bags." I'm, I thought, well, hang on, I haven't sent a picture of him of the bags, and he's like, um, "I said, where are you?" He said, "Are you in Bournemouth?" He says, "I'm in front here." He's about ten meters in front. <laughs> um, what else? Let me think. Oh, they had a Fleetwood Mac tribute band that were oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> and I was standing there with my crutch. I love Fleetwood Mac. They were Don't amazing. Talk to me about Fleetwood Mac. Don't worry. Oh, I, mean, I love Fleetwood Mac. Sorry. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I've been having issues with my my stump this this week. It's been playing up. It uh, it's kind of like, yeah, it kind of kind of reinforces the fact that I'm doing the right thing. I think it's about 50, 57 or 56 days now. And uh, that's my op. And um, I think, uh, apart from ASCN... Oh, you're up, the first one to mention that, Steve. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's pretty much my week, really. I haven't really, you know, been knackered all the time. Absolutely shattered. <laughs> that's it. That's me done. <laughs> On with the show. I have, well, I have some more news. <laughs> I forgot to share. Um, I passed my uni year this week. I got my um, well done that. My I was so, so worried about that exam. I really was. But the mark actually didn't just scrape a pass. It did all right. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm now halfway through my whole degree um, and ready to start again in September, October. It's the beginning of October officially, but I think I'll get the stuff through September. So, oh, that's brilliant, lovely. Um, just a shout, uh, just a oh, shout, right. out, Steve. Sorry, sorry. Um, Alanis said if you have any questions, Steve, ask away about the stump issue. She got sepsis from her behind. She got what sepsis? In, she got sepsis in this... from her stump. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, oh, that's Rachel, not to scare Rachel, you. We, we, we having got issues, I just obviously speak to her. Front of a magazine as well, Rachel's magazine. Oh, let me go mm. get it. <laughs> so, uh, it's all scrapbook material, this is, isn't it, for the future? Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Well, um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, that was very like, 
gone. I, well, I you guys make the front cover of the UA. My <laughs> stone was in the UA. <laughs> so I had no idea that I, I they asked um, me to do write two articles, but I had no idea Don was going to put us on the front cover. So that was a nice surprise. And then we got the article about uh, Stoma's, how Stoma's found his love. And then there's Louise's Stoma, the one on the left. That one. Yeah, and, and then, two on the bottom. <laughs> But that is that was the most important article for me was about talking your about stories. the Scotsdomer and the research. So that was very. And you got your cartoon in print, didn't you? I was yeah, going to say, I love the cartoon. I tell you, I remember the drama drawing that cartoon and 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 having to oh, having to look at it and tell her that yes, it's fine. Yeah, for Steve, you're <laughs> the animation. I was going to say, he was lazy. Because Steve was, I asked him, he was lazy, and he went, oh. "I'm not doing it. You have to do it." No, so no, I no. have to do it. No, I couldn't improve on it. And it's, you know what? It was your work, girl. And, you know, it was good. So, therefore, you it can't do something. Better. It might would have been different, but it wouldn't have has been a, as effective, I don't think. I helped you with the chair, didn't I? And the, and the face the shapes. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, back to the show. So, back what we're talking about tonight, then, Louise. Okay, do you reckon we should do the men's fraternity side of things first? Yeah, because that should take about... Two minutes. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so um, I run polls up on Twitter. The poll hasn't finished yet. A grand total of 11 men took part. Um, and it was literally a three-way split between those who got told that they couldn't conceive whilst they were on immunosuppressants <coughs> versus no, they hadn't been told and versus those that weren't even aware that you weren't meant to conceive whilst on immunosuppressants. Um, there was one chap that said to me that whilst on azathioprine and infliximab, he had uh, two healthy children with his with his partner. He had so what, that's good. Two healthy children with his partner. Biologics, it's two, two all and right a half, to conceive then. on, isn't it? Sorry. Is? Biologics, it's all right to conceive on, isn't it? It's just the it's like methotrexate and stuff that you're not allowed. I think I think with the men, I think it's just the methotrexate, isn't it? Everything else yeah. because they're not carrying the baby it doesn't affect them yeah. as it does from Biologics, the female side of things i mean i did so a tw twitter chat with them um, the bottom line ibd if you're on twitter you know her um i did a twitter chat with her the other week and got talking to one of the ladies because when i conceived um with the boys i had to be off i had to be off me for check eight, which obviously the reason why is because it does damage the baby. It damages your sperm if you're a man, it damages the eggs if you're a girl. Um, and you end up with either a baby that dies or a severely disabled baby. So it's really, really important that you don't get pregnant on that. But um, biologics, I was taken off them um, to try with the boys. Um, so it's the same with methotrexate, you have to be off it at least three months before you even start trying. Um, and they did the same with my, at the time I was on Infliximab with Leo and then I was on Etanicept when I was getting pregnant with Riley. Um, and um, now they are using them during pregnancy a lot more, um, certainly in the first two trimesters. Um, but it was really cool to look into, actually. I want to sort of look into it a little bit more and get some information and maybe a blog, a blog post the, about it and stuff. I think the, sorry, Nat. Um, I think the sorry. general rule for all women on um, biologics, if they're on the live biologics, so that's anything that we have intravenously, um, anything that we inject, then I think it's for, for either three, uh, between three to six months that the baby can't have any live vaccinations. Yeah, because that's, that's how to come out of their system before they can get, have yeah emotions. and it depends how long you take it i think the guidance is they like you to stop when you enter the third trimester but if you have to go and take it all the way through your pregnancy obviously it's longer for the baby afterwards um as well but it's it's sort of i think it's quite a good thing that they they i know why they can't research it obviously you can't test test it out. it's just um it's just not ethical, but it's nice that things are being done because it really is a struggle when you're getting pregnant to come off of everything and and risk your health in such a, a big way. So to know that you can possibly stay on your biologics now is quite a relief almost. Is there research that that helps state that as well, Natalie? Is there... I think there has been. It's just basically 
people getting pregnant by accident on it. Um, so uh, there isn't masses of amounts, but they are um, more and more now. They're letting ladies stay on it. Um, okay. It's so uh, it's a, it's a case of though, isn't it? With the immunosuppressants, if you're on them long enough, because they're treating the because they yeah yeah sorry, get phantom brain, um, because they're treating the condition and because they're treating the cause, your body's healed enough for you to fall pregnant. To do that, yeah, exactly. So Women in the groups, especially those like with Crohn's and UC, normally fall pregnant because they've been on the immunosuppressants. Mm -hmm. Because it's the only time that the body's been fit enough for them to fall pregnant. Because I think there is literally there is like a mechanism in the body, especially with Crohn's and Crohn's and UC as a whole, that that you may not actually fall pregnant whilst you're in flare. I can't guarantee that because some people have, but those that have been trying for years while they have been in flare normally report and document that they couldn't conceive so yeah. I did um when not long after I got diagnosed with the Crohn's really I was trying for a third um didn't know about my Crohn's didn't know what it meant didn't know anything really and um ended up having two early miscarriages um at five weeks and six weeks um but it was just because my body was in such a state there was no way it was going to happen Whereas with the boys, I fell really easily. I did have a miscarriage before having Riley, um, but that was a little bit later on and there was something they did discover, there was something wrong with the baby's brain basically. Um, and I had to sort of go and have surgery and stuff for that one. So um, that was sort of a different case altogether. But yeah, my body was just basically so there was malabsorption issues and all stuff like that. But like I say, because I didn't understand my Crohn's at the time, I just thought, oh, carry on as normal. And, and obviously that didn't work out very well. We've all been there, lovely. I had one before Maisie. And that was before mm -hmm. the Infliximab, before they put me on that. I had fish, I had the fishes then as well. So um, the, I think the only other thing with stoma surgery um, that affects men, I think, more than anything is, I think, to those of those that have perhaps had uh, got prostate cancer, um, those who are going through, um, for the men, maybe the urostomy side of things with surgery, Rachel, you'd know more about this than... Yeah, are we, are we talking about females, are we talking about men? Um, men with the... Yeah so, so, yeah, so basically, yeah, so basically, it's, yeah, so, okay, so talk about urostomy. Most, I'm going to say most, not all, but the majority that have the urostomy removed, the prostate also gets removed. And I was quite, quite shocked when I first heard about that at a, at a talk at the UA event last year in Northampton. And it, it shocked me because it, it you don't see it talked about. You don't see much information. And, and I some people are told most people are told but they're not told afterwards obviously removing the prostate means that you can't produce sperm and like um erections can be difficult and you might have to have help in that way but they sometimes it's it's an inf a bit that is there's not much support there it's getting better and it is getting better but i was quite shocked at how kind of little it's not talked about so with the urostomy most cases the prostate is removed i'm not going to say all because i don't know that but they said when we listened to the presentation by the consultant and a psychosexual counselor they said most cases um and they also it was really good it was a good conversation because it they shared a lot of the tools that you could use like the injections the pills the pump and and it was a really good presentation because it got people talking about it which maybe you don't talk about um regarding also chris mentions here about um where is it gone so he said about the radiation well, therapy yeah, so radiotherapy so when when you've had radiotherapy for female and males you usually will have like a session with the consultant usually sometimes a counselor with your specialist nurse that talks about freezing eggs or freezing and that side of it i don't know the proper term and i've been out of radiotherapy for 10 years now but i know back then that there is there, it is discussed it is discussed in depth because that could be an option and for some people choose that um yeah I, it's chris said i was told the day before surgery i lose all function downstairs didn't have any time to discuss and, and that and that's mm. a big problem and the thing is this is something that isn't talked about as as much is the sexual the sexual 
I'm not going to say dysfunction because I don't like the word because Trevor, Trevor, who was a Eurostomy, wrote an article for me about that side. And he said, like, the birds be at the, the, the I can't even remember the, the, the uh, song. But what he wrote in there is that it's just not discussed. And I've got a friend who's um, older, he's 70. And I, I wanted to bring it up. So I brought it up and he went, yeah, it was an issue at the beginning. He said, but I thought, well, I'm I'm sixty odd. It's it doesn't matter. I don't. I won't. I won't discuss it with my consultant. But why isn't it talked about? Not if it's not if like you, Chris. If it was emergency surgery, why isn't it talked about afterwards and then be referred mm -hmm. to people to go? Do you know what yeah. you're going to struggle to get an erection? Do you, do you not think though that that might just gen generally be? Obviously, this is no this is no disrespect to 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 the men. But, you know, doing the polls and stuff and bits and pieces, men are so much more closed off. Yeah, uh, and I do, I think that that doesn't help. However, however, when the I was... The opportunity when I was, is not given, is it? No, so when I was in... Gonna... Yeah, when I was on radiotherapy machine, I, I, I so on radiotherapy, I was put on the machine with the patients that had prostate cancer. Now, this was a big issue for all of them, and nobody talked about it. But I was young; I was twenty, twenty-one, and I managed to get people to open up about their sex life. I was the only person that could do it, so they put me on this machine, which I loved being on it. I got people to talk about. I then referred them to where they needed to refer them to get sexual counselling and help because it was ruining their lives, their relationships, and all this. And it's so frustrating that ten years down the line, there still seemed to be this kind of gap where there is where because men, you need to reach far more with men because they are a little mm. bit closed off but if it is if it's an issue for somebody and you are giving them in a non-judgmental way to talk space to talk they do and i saw it happen time after time if you realize if you don't give them that judgment and you are able to give them a time to talk they open up to you and i had a few hugs going do you know what you've really changed like thank you so much it saved my relationship and it just makes me really sad that it, this isn't being talked about. Rach, do you think that part of Sorry, it might yeah, be passionate about no, this? <laughs> no, I know you are, but do you not think that part of it might be be with the men? Because obviously, men and women's anatomy is not that different. But obviously, women women have what they have, and men have what they have. And do you not think that maybe essentially because it is effectively taken away their manhood, and it is effectively taken away, you know, the, the part that does effectively make them a man. Do you think that might be why the consultants don't 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 breach it and don't talk about it as much? But that, Sorry, shouldn't, I know that's that, but, but that, but that shouldn't matter though, because they should talk about it. Because and okay, you need to judge who you talk about it to. But I think it needs to be dis like it needs to be. It needs. So my friend Gary, he had no idea that he won't be able to get a hard on. Now, surely that should be discussed, and maybe it mm -hmm. is in the consent form, but surely it should be not only discussed, but kind of a, a session around it, or like some sort of kind of counselling, because that could really impact people. Just because they're older doesn't mean that they don't like having sex. No, you know, but and it, could, could the other thing be, and I know, I know this is really, this is a bit of a wrong way to put it, but if you know, going from like a young man's perspective, maybe to an older man's perspective to, I don't know, say somebody Steve's age. Do you think that if they was taking time to go through to the surgery and everything else, do you think there could be a possibility that some of the men would actually say no towards having that surgery done if it was discussed because of what, what the end result ends up with? I that's can't. a good question, though. That's a good mm. question. That I, it is I, a good question. And then, you I know what? It would, it, I think it would definitely... Um, it would it would make uh, having that decision a lot a lot harder to make. Do you know what I mean? Um, it would you'd take a lot longer in, in actually coming to a, a final decision. I'm sure of it. It's just it, I just I'm sat here thinking about it because essentially, if you think about a woman and when when it when a woman has has cancer, regardless of where it is, the women t typically struggle worse with their breasts than anything else, and the reason are the defining part of the, the, the female body so to speak and that is what makes them female I mean I know that I've been through it with both my aunties and my nan and you know my mum I'm trying to force to go and have a mammogram at the moment because she's over 50 both of my aunties have had pretty severe breast cancer and my mum still won't go and have it done and both her older and her younger sister have got it and I'm like well the odds are mum if you don't get checked you're going to be but part of it with my mum is because she doesn't want to know because she doesn't want to have to go through what her sisters have been through, like with a double mastectomy and then breast reconstruction and Almost everything like else. Almost like ignorance is bliss. 
yeah so it's like ignorance is bliss and it's just part of me thinks that if you're being sat down especially from a male point of view getting told in this operation what like, you need to have this operation to save your life but it's good the dog's <laughs> coughing one up can you hear <laughs> like, yeah I think he's starting some kind of motor or something like that I, the dog's going mad at them i'm like i appreciate I, I, no, I understand what you're saying and i get what you're saying that they may people may not have the surgery however once the surgery has been completed, that doesn't say that then that shouldn't yeah. be discussed because then oh, no, they've it, lost it that function. But it's not discussed unless somebody goes, I'm having a problem, which a lot of men don't. And a lot of it's men that, really. are, that are older, like my friend Gary, he said, well, I don't want to mention it, but it has been an issue in the past because he said, oh, well, I'm older, I don't need it. And it's like, actually, it's a natural part of life that can be for you know any age. It's like Chris has put here, he said, um, mm -hmm. right, so he said, there are options, but focus is usually on addressing the cancer stoma surgery as a primary factor. And waiting for referral for an implant, it's tough to take it at the beginning, but it can be fixed. And it's it, sometimes it's the referrals take a while to go through, and it's not there is there is, seems to be this kind of non-support. There's a lot of case studies going on at the moment around kind of intimacy and around sexual in both in both a post-cancer for like for bladder cancer in particular i think for both for females and men so maybe this will improve in the future that the sexual conversations because also females can be if they've had the urostomy or pelvic acceleration sometimes some of their vagina are gone sometimes all of the vagina are gone sometimes if they haven't and just had a urostomy the vagina will be shorter so they will have issues as well but it i think women are more open to discussing and the that. conversation really needs to be done doesn't it in every case yeah, I was going to say, the fact that women losing their breasts get counselling before the surgery, it should be no different should for a man no, doing all. this. It, it shouldn't be any different. It's exactly the same sort of scenario. Like you say, you're losing your womanhood, you feel like if you're losing your breasts. With a man, it's their manhood. It should be offered. And yeah, people might pull out of surgery, but they risk it with women, so... It's having all that knowledge ahead of time, isn't it? Every, yeah, you should always you, have you, all the answers. No matter how before. shocking and hard that it might be, be to deal with, you know, you need to know what's going to happen, good and, you know, warts and all. I Excuse think it's better point. to know because you can prepare yourself if you're not getting told. Can you imagine and... if, if uh, Steve, uh, you know, imagine if, like, that was removed and you had no idea that that was a that because your surgeons have told you that could be a possible possibility but your surgeons have told you if you weren't told that and that had gone how angry would you feel you would be devastated wouldn't you <laughs> yeah and he absolutely it, 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 it doesn't bear thinking about you know you need to know all the information before you enter into any any surgery like this you know and the risks involved and where where the surgeon lives and things like that <laughs> <laughs> don't if my surgeon mucks me up i'll be hunting him down on the electoral house <laughs> mm -hmm. i just I'm quickly I'm add, add a really good comment derek is go on derek he's put a comment um i have a catheter over a year now and i've lost the ability for an erection no one discusses the issue you need to pass urine and have a stoma as well again catheters is the other issue that's not discussed if you have a urethral catheter through the penis you it's unable to do that you know, so how does that work? You can get condom catheters, you can get super pubic catheters, but that's another issue, another aspect of this that again is not discussed. And hopefully, in the future, th these discussions can happen because again, they they're, they're left. Well, that impacts the impacts their sex life, that impacts the partner, that impacts. Sorry, really, really, really stupid question, Rachel. Obviously, the catheters are in to obviously f to to filter out the wee. Do the catheters have to remain in 24-7? Do you not get a break at all? No. So basically, if you self-catheterise, it means that you self-catheterise a couple of times a day, you pop the catheter in, in the urethra, man or, man or female, you remove it, you bin it, you go about your day. When you need to go and empty your, empty your bladder, again, you catheterise. Some people will catheter once a day and empty the bladder. Some people have to do it every time. Depends. Now, when would you, you have feel... a urethra, Sorry. When, when you have, sorry, I just finished this button. And when you have a urethral catheter, that goes through the urethra. That stays in there for about six weeks. You have a change probably every six to eight weeks. Some people have four, but it depends. You have that changed every like six to eight weeks. So that will be changed regularly. So that stays put. Then if you have a super pubic catheter, that goes through the pubic bone and um, goes through the gap of the pubic bone. And that is changed 
mine was changed every four weeks towards the end because it was horrific but the spasms were horrific and the removal was horrific but it can be like six to eight weeks but there are also an option for a condom catheter which is a condom like a sheath that goes over the penis and then there's a there's a catheter bit but i don't know how i don't know derek if you've tried that or how actually good they are i don't to be honest i can't see it really staying on and difficulties with that respect but that's another aspect that again isn't talked about mm. sorry okay. i get i'm quite passionate no, about this because no, it's, it. it's worth speaking about because obviously some of the people that watch have catheters some people have you know self catheterized some people have urostomies so it's good that people know and that you know at least one of us sort of knows be able to give some answers with regards to certain things because i wouldn't have a bleeding clue um it was it's a bit it's a bit of a difficult it's a bit of a difficult one because i think that the other one that um we was going to uh, touch on briefly this evening um was with regards to uh fertility um but being being able to fall pregnant but not being able to have a child i think um i'm not too sure about that one um because i know you were speaking to me about it the other day wasn't you rage I don't mind because um, I, I post. I've got a post going up tomorrow about my non-mum status, which has taken me years to write. But I finally did wrote it, and I think it's it's. I'm proud that I've written it. I don't mind. I don't mind talking about it because it is an aspect. It is a an you know a discussion for some people. Like I know uh, there are quite a few people that get get it. But yeah, so just a little bit little bit with me is I kind of when I got ill I was always the colorectal surgeon always told me he kept drumming down contraception 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 so we chose the marina coil and he said whatever you do do not get pregnant because I don't think your body will cope this was before I had um, my bladder was removed so before 2015 then when I was in 2015 I had the camera at me in the bladder and after seven years of a superpubic catheter I had um, the cells had mutated so it was I think it was more likely precancerous they never used the word cancer but it was within two weeks it was removed it was very quick I got called into the office and they asked me to bring a friend with me and I bought my mate my one of my best mates Brummy Steve who Steve says isn't really Brummy but I bought him with me and because uh, it was very quick I couldn't get my parents here so I brought him in and we had a conversation and back on the bus he was he's a counsellor and he sort of talked me through he said well what did you hear and I told him and then he looked at me and he grabbed my hand and he went, Rachel, they said you can't ever carry. They said like you have, you can't carry. The, the way they remove it, the, you if you do fall pregnant, you need to have an abortion. You can't go full term because it will just it be disastrous because it wouldn't, the uterus isn't the same. And I, I was completely devastated. I felt like he had smacked me in the face. I, I totally missed that. Out of all the conversation, you need a second stoma, you need this, you need it done urgently, la, 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 la. I missed it never ever be able to have kids and I always held that hope that I would and it was like I kind of taken away and it's I feel a little bit like out on no man's land because I could probably conceive I don't know but I don't know if I I, I cannot go full term so I feel like I can't class myself as infertile but yet I I can't yeah uh, and it's, it's really like you have to think of your health first and foremost don't you you know what I mean that's that's paramount and also about the also about the child you know with all yep. my admissions and everything i is i wouldn't i was advised i was told not to on my notes i've got a big kind of written thing about where if she ever gets pregnant needs to have an abortion i've got that's all on my notes there's no chance that i can even chance it but what i find difficult is the questions like and i laura i don't know if you've had similar but people going so why haven't you got children do you know what? It's none of your business. Mm -hmm. So what I've so what I've kind of realised is, and people think because you're in your thirties, they assume that you have children. They assume that everybody has kids. And what I've I've got a pre statement that I say, I don't have any children, but I'm auntie to lots, and that adds a bit of humour, and that adds me able to say, yeah, you know, it's it shuts the conversation down a little bit, but adds humour. Whereas I was finding before I was over disclosing, I was then an angrily say no, and then the interaction stopped. And then what is also difficult is when strangers decide to say, well, what about kids? What about IVF? What about adopt? Uh, what about adopting and fostering? And they don't know my circumstance. I would love to foster and adopt. I tried. When I was with my, my ex, Yanis, we tried. I went to adoption panel. There was no way. There, because of my prognosis on, on paper, there was no way I could do it. And that's a hard 
hard to talk about because I really wanted to go down that avenue and I can't. And when strangers ask me and ask about IVF, you don't want to go into details with strangers. So I just, I find the ad and the anti bit kind of stops that and then you don't need to go into it. And I realise I need to keep myself safe so I don't have to go into that discussion. Yeah, my answer to when people go to me, oh, well, when are you having another one? I'm going, well, you borrow that one for a week, bring it back to me, then ask me why I'm not having any more because it's just a pain in the ass to sit there and just say well can't have any more i can't have it well why can't you have any more because you have one mm. and i'm like well um don't want to end up in a coffin <laughs> so it shuts the co- it shuts the con- conversation down um there and there and that's hard for both, but that's hard for you guys but imagine if you can't have like yeah, any I know. Kids. it's and it's a difficult it's a difficult conversation for anybody even if you have kids or don't have kids and even if you can't have any kids now and you have kids you're still you know i, I know think, you still struggle i think personally for me i think it would be easier to have it all taken out and then if somebody said to me well why can't you it's like because i don't have anything left in there I think it'd be easier because you don't really sit anywhere. It's like Rachel said, you don't sit anywhere if you can carry, but you can't safely carry to term. It's just too many risks involved. I think I think that's what people. I think that's sometimes what women struggle more with anything else is being told that there's a there's a possibility. That yes, they will fall pregnant, but you can't carry. I think that's I think that's what some ladies do find difficult, and it's. It's not an easy I one because it's always the thought in the back of your head, like what if an accident happened, or what, what if I could, like, do you know what I mean? What if I could? Yeah. Or what if I could carry far enough? It's, it's just, it's not, it's not closure, really. I suppose, is it? I don't know. The way Maisie is at the moment, it's closure for me. I can tell you. <laughs> It's going, she's going through 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 hormones at the moment. She tells me she can't say hormones; it's hormones. Oh, hormones. I was like, "Damn straight, child." <laughs> See, I really have, and I mean, I know I'm exceptionally lucky to have my kids, and I've got Layla as well. Um, but I, I would have another in a heartbeat. Like I've always said, three. I don't know whether it's because I'm one of three or whatever, but three's just always been. I suppose with Layla, I have got three, but, and I think we've been with Steve now, I'd love to have that with him, but obviously I've not got to just think about my health, it's his as well, he's on methotrexate, so it'd be him having to come off medication and and things like that, so it's it's difficult, and I don't know whether it will ever happen, but um, like I say, I'm, I'm very lucky I've got mine anyway, so it's not... But and I try to think about too much. It still must impact, though, even though, like Louise and you, you know, you both have kids with different partners, and the partners that you're with now, you know, in Louise's case, hasn't got any, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but, you know, but like. Do you know what? I'll be perfectly honest. Before I dated Ben, I was on plenty of fish specifically for dads that already had kids. Mm-hmm. Just because that would make life so much easier, um, both sides of the relationship, if that makes any sense. Because if I've got a kid and they've got a kid, then another kid's not going to really come into the situation, if that makes any sense. Yeah, they're, they've sort of... Yeah, because that's an aspect that we don't really think about, do we? Like the aspect of the partner, like Ben or, mm. you know, and I know that, Louise, you you know, even though you have one, I know it's quite difficult and painful this you know realizing that you can't have any more and i think it doesn't and it doesn't matter whether you don't have children if you've been told that you can't and that it's hard no matter what age you are you know when people go have hysterectomies and they've had children it's 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 difficult you know i yeah. they wanted to remove my uterus and i refused and i wish i had said yes why i said said no i had no idea but i wish i said yes because I I was 28 and I wanted to keep that part of me, even though there was no chance I wanted to keep it. And I wish mm. I had said yes, but hindsight is a wonderful thing, you know, and now I can't have any surgery unless it's an emergency, so I doubt that will happen. But I know it's flipped, so that's causing me issues at the moment. But it, it, there we go. I Sometimes think- we don't always, we don't want to, like, it's a woman part of me. I've already got my bladder removed. I don't want more organs removed, you know? I think... I think with women as an entire whole, and that's women as a species, not necessarily the women that don't ever want children or don't have that maternal instinct in them, 
But I think any woman, regardless of whether you can't have children or you can carry, I think being told that you can't have any more children or you can't have any children, I think is more damaging to a uh, woman's psyche than um, anything else. And I think the reason being is because men can't carry children and because we are seen as, you know, a mother and a potential mother in the future and having to carry a child and then nurture the child and everything else. I think, I just, I just think that's what, I think that's what affects a woman's psyche more than anything else. It would and still I, affect a man, but I, I don't think to the levels that, that it would a woman. I mean, <clears throat> obviously I've got three, three boys. Uh, I had my vasectomy probably six years ago. Uh, Cause I, you know, I, I figured like I've got the amount of kids that I want now. I don't want it anymore. Um, but you know, if I, the thought of not ever being able to have kids myself would have devastated me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I am, I am a foster child. I was fostered. I was never adopted. I was fostered in, in like three families and children's homes and stuff. And I don't think I could have done that with another child, with a child. Obviously it's not until you're given the option that, that you're told that you can't that then obviously you're going to look down other avenues. But uh, I, know for, I know for a fact that it would it would devastate a hell of a lot of men. I can only talk from a male point of view, you know what I mean? We also need to, need to also cover that some people, so there's a, a network for non-mums and it's called the Non-Mum Network. And I really love it because it's for people that no mums are sort of allowed in it. And it's sort of, you can sort of be open and talk about things that are frustrating or how you are, where you're at. But it's also for people who also choose not to have children because, again, it's for people who mm -hmm. can't, but also people who choose because we have to respect that. So not everybody wants children as well. And yeah. yet they can also be kind of looked upon society sometimes. And and that's and and it's nice that this kind of group covers both, you know, both do you know, Do you know what some of the society's um, expectations of, of women, do you know what I see that like sometimes? Has any of you watched The Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Amazing. The, the, the women's, like, um, the, the expectations of, of women as a general whole and the society's expectations or Donald Trump's expectations because he's just a div um, is that all women that are able to conceive should have children. That is literally the dystopia. That is how they work. That is how they run. And I think that sometimes looking looking at that and the way that they filmed it and the way they've done it, it's not really too far off of it's today's not. society. No. And you I can flip that people on its head that as well. feel it's like they can ask you, Sorry. oh, why don't you have children? Like, I don't, wh why, why should you ever ask somebody that? Do you know what I mean? That's that, it. But that's, it's, it's, that is a society thing. People think that that's okay to ask that. It's the same with males. Exactly the same. You know, just because you have an organ to provide children and you might be fully capable of fathering children, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you want to. No. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like, it's down to the personal view, isn't it? Obviously, people with children have a different view to people without children, and it's always going to be that way. Whether it's through choice or whether it's not through choice, you're going to have a different outlook on life in general, and you are going to portray that to other people. I've done it myself. You know, I've yeah. done it myself to friends of mine, saying, you know, the, the, the simple chat of, um, you know, what happens, you're not creating a legacy and, and blah, blah, blah. And it's really selfish thing to say. You know, I, I, I don't say it anymore. I've had but, people say but, that to me. It's one of the most hard, hard, worst thing you can say is you, you're creating, I know I'm not creating a legacy. I know that the le it, it could potentially die on me and it's all on my brother. Yeah, but, but when Rach, you're a bloke... Your, yours is, is um, not through not wanting to. Do you see what I mean? Okay, yeah. yeah. It, it, what I'm trying to say is, if if you if you had the option and you could safely carry, yeah. um, and but you didn't want to, why should you? Mm. It's down to you, and you shouldn't have to answer to nobody about anything like that because it's your body, mm. and it's up to you with what you do do with it. You know. So, but but we do judge. We do. Mm. It's human nature. We all judge in different ways. I, I, and, I think I think the judgment changes though when you've when, when you've had something like that dropped on your doorstep or like Steve, your judgment changed probably after you had your your vasectomy. I think I think everybody. I think the general. I think general society. So those that don't go through what we've been through haven't experienced what we've been through. 
they will ask the questions. Whereas I think those of us that are a bit more understanding or a bit more in the know, we wouldn't automatically turn around and say to someone, oh, well, when are you creating a legacy? When are you going to have kids? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? My judgment changed when I spoke to people like Rachel, people who mm -hmm. have, have had that take that choice taken away. Now, whether she would or whether she wouldn't or whoever it, we're talking about wanted to or not, that's, that's their personal decision. But, you know, my, my views changed completely. It wasn't after my vasectomy because I decided then I'd had enough ch children, you know. I had counselling before I went into that office, you know, for a number of weeks. They, they decide, you know, before they actually do that to a man, is this really what you want? All the scenarios come up, you know, what if you they were in a car crash and, and blah, blah, blah. What about future partners? But, you know, so, so there's a lot of counselling. So a youngster going for that sort of surgery uh, is really going to be grilled before they get the decision. And Steve, like when you like Steve, see me at times when I've been hysterical over it. Like sometimes something will trigger me, and I, and it, and I get upset, and it can impact me for a whole week. And then I pull myself together, and it's fine. And I go through stages of being okay about it and not being okay about it. But can I just? I want to say a few messages before the end. I've got a few yeah, comments. That's lovely. I've seen Laura's those. put. Laura's put. Like I never want. I never wanted children, but it's still hard to lose all all her female reproductive organs. It's part of being a woman. And also Lana says that going back to the men for man thing about is Jamie, is that a partner? That's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Put, um Jamie has just said lovely is he wants he wasn't given any information at all about having children or nothing when he had surgery and he wished he had he did have for peace of mind. So he's twenty five. Yeah. And uh, um, Paul that put since my ostomy and rectum out, my bladder never empties properly, I had bladder dilation four times still the same gp now thinking about self catering and that's another issue that i think nicola on the um fung bag and shit bag group and a few other people that that have found that after surgery their bladders haven't been emptying the same and that can also be a side effect of the surgery yeah well straight away i started after my stoma surgery my levels were up, um infection levels mm -hmm. and the first thing they they checked was my bladder did they? Yeah, yeah, so it's obviously something that comes up quite a lot. And sometimes it might be that sometimes they, they can nick it, but even if they don't nick it, sometimes it just doesn't work the function is, the same as before. Is that why when they do my surgery that they flush me through with so much water? What do you mean? Well, when do I, when, no, no, no. When I have my surgery done and when they put me back up onto the ward, um, my surgeons have always given a jug and I'm under strict instructions of how much fluid I have to drink after I've had the surgery done. So within a day, they monitor everything that comes out of that catheter, what, yeah. uh, with what's going that's in. That's just with a, yeah. That's every, that's, and that's nearly every, sur every surgery that you end up with a catheter, you, you will be, yeah. you'll be mon made sure that what you drink is equivalent to what's removed. And then after you've had the catheter removed, they will then bladder scan you to check that after you've emptied normally, you are not retaining any urine. And if you are retaining urine, then they will keep trying. And then if they find that you are, then they may either leave the catheter back in or eventually may decide then you need to self catheterize and in Paulette's, um, now they're thinking about what that could possibly happen. Because if you've got a level of urine left, that will give more, you can get more infections. So it can be, yeah. you can get UTIs and more chance of that. I was more, okay. being a male, I was more worried about having a catheter than I was the actual operation. <laughs> I think oh, do you know just, what? I, I hate, you, I know, like you, I hate having a catheter in, trying to move across that bed and catching that bleeding pipe. Try, try living with one. <laughs> try, try, try actually working in a busy range of, with a catheter up your hoo ha. And, and uh, you know, the bed, you know, it's hard. I like the hoo ha. Hoo ha, it's nice. I, like think, that. I think the worst one for me after the last surgery was, though, because they did so much in my pelvic area with removing all the scar tissue and dropping things back to where they're meant to be and everything else. They didn't tell me about the bleeding afterwards. Oh, so God, that happened after my 24 hours after I'd had this surgery done. They'd got me out of bed, they'd helped me wash because you know, the good old sponge bath at the side of the bed just to get you a bit fresh before they get you back in. And I've got me time for tea nighty on brand new nighty. I was looking forward to wearing that nighty, I bought it especially for hospital, and it was grey. They got me up onto the bed, they got me left leg, they got me right leg up, and then they got me left leg up, and they started to shift me across the bed. And oh my god, it, it looked like I'm sorry 
for graphic information, but this does happen. It looked no word of light. It looked like I'd lost a pint of blood from my foof. And I was like, oh my God, is that coming from the catheter? Where is this blood coming from? It soaked my nighty. It soaked the bed. <laughs> That's why I left two minutes. <laughs> great, Graham and I have to go. We're going to go. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you, you all. Love you. It'd be two weeks' time. It'd be over and I'll be on the phone. Yeah. All right, love. We love you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Um, yeah, they did. They didn't. They don't tell you after the surgery, especially if they've removed scar tissue from there. That's going to happen. They had to cut me out for my night. I was hysterical. I was having a massive fit and everything. I was like, I thought I was bleeding to death. Oh no! Not but, good. No, nah, it was that bad. It literally, it it, it was it, it was is, everywhere. They had to clean me back just up. Just being in a hospital environment straight away, you're on high alert, aren't you? When you've just you know, had surgery in that, yeah, everything, that, everything yeah. in your mind say you just want the nurse to come back and say everything's fine. You don't know alarms like it's going normal, on. normal, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, I'm lucky in, in the fact that I've only been a couple of times. Really, was my, my surgery and my my embolism after my surgery. And apart from a few other little little things, that's pretty much been it. As for stays, you know, I've been really lucky. Like, I've mind mine, they're coming. Fingers crossed, mm -hmm. you know, it all goes swimmingly. I've been Stay. listening to Just stories. Steve, when, well, they, when they book me in for mine, you send me selfies when you have yours done and I'll send you selfies when I've had mine done. We can compare uh, the levels uh, We can compare the levels of crap from day one to day seven when we start getting better. I'll be using filters, I reckon. No, you can't nah, use nah, nah, you know, nah, you know, you're a bit peaky day one. You know, straight after in the recovery room on the drugs, you're a bit peaky. Day one, you're a bit peaky. Day two, so of day three... See, day three, day four is normally when I stop projectile vomiting because of the drugs. I'm, and then I'm, I'm really, really nervous, to be fair. You know, the closer it mm -hmm. gets, but it's got to be done. And I don't want, I'd rather have it done in one go than, than yeah. more admissions, you know, fingers crossed. You know, and at least this well. is planned. It's not like an emergency surgery yeah, and all great. that. So that will be a lot, a lot better for you. Yeah, planned it is so much better, right? Um, we're all gonna have to say good night because I think there's a couple of us sitting here with very philosophy bags. I know I I'm, am. I'm currently holding, yeah, I'm currently like, holding it all night. I'm currently half cooked my dinner, you half <laughs> cooked it, it's <laughs> waiting there, yeah, <laughs> chicken and paprika. Mm. All right, um, mm. we would like to say thank you so much to everyone watching this evening. Um, if you haven't already clicked on the subscribe button, please do so. Um, that I'd love to push the numbers up a little bit more. <laughs> Have a few more followers, a few more watchers. That would be great. Um, I believe next week that there's a possibility that we're having a guest on. I can't give you the exact details right now um, because I don't have them and Natalie's doing it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'd like to say thank you for watching. Hopefully any of you based in Kent see you at the Colostomy um, Association Day on Saturday. And um, I'd like to say thank you very much. And I'm going to say good night. Good night. Good night. Saying good night. Thank you.